In this video, you will learn the basics of one of the most fundamental scripting languages that exist, namely the bash scripting language. Of course, I will not be able to cover everything on bash scripting, but I will provide you with the links to more resources so that you know where to, you look for when you're stuck. Also in the next video, I will teach you some more of the advanced bash features, such as pipes and how to write scripts in bash. Um, if you open a terminal on your Linux or Mac system, you're faced with a bash or the bash derivative command line interpreter. But this was not always the case. So I want to show you a brief history behind the shells that exist on Unix systems. Note that also today you can replace your standard command line interpreter with one of the many shells that are being developed. So one of the most early shells was the Born shell, developed in 1979, and the C and Tickle shell in 1978. The C and Tickle shell had more improved command interpreters than the Born shell, but they were less popular for programming. Then 10 years later in 1989, the Free Software Foundation developed an open source version of the Born shell and called them the Born Again shell. And the Born Again shell is even today one of the most used shells on Mac and Linux systems. Because of its popularity, many derivatives have been developed, such as the Corn shell, the Set shell, and the Dash shell. The Dash shell is now the default shell on Ubuntu systems. So why should you learn Bash in the first place? First of all, learning Bash means learning the roots of scripting. Also, Bash shells are frequently encountered in Unix systems. Also, Bash is the dominating command interpreter in scripting language. Writing Bash scripts often evolves naturally from, a, from the same workflow. First of all, you start with a sequence of commands that you use often, and because you're too lazy to write them out every time, you write a script by placing them in a file. Then, over time, you would like to you add some command line options um, to be able to use your commands in different ways. Then, you make it even more powerful by introducing some variables, maybe some if tests to avoid errors, and some loops to enable more complex program flow. And at some point, your um, pre- and post-processing becomes too advanced for Bash, and then it's time to switch to a different language, like Python or a compiled language. When learning a new language, it's always good to know what the language is good for and what it's not good at. The Bash language is particularly good if you have to do file and directory management, a systems management, like building a script that compiles your programs, very good for tasks where you have to combine other scripts, and also for rapid prototyping of more advanced scripts, and for very simple output processing and plotting. Bash is not very good for if you want to write a script that is cross-platform portable. Even though Bash is available in many systems, Often a bash script on one system does not run on the other one. It's also not very good if you want to develop a program with a graphical user interface, um, or if you want to interface with legacy or other libraries. And as I mentioned before, it is not very good at more advanced post or pre-processing and block, or if you want to do calculations and complex mathematical formula. So some common tasks that one performs in a bash script are file writing, for loops, running an application, Combining applications, I will teach you pipes for that. Uh, file clopping and testing for file types. Managing files and directories. Uh, directory tree traver traversals, for instance, finding files of a certain type. And packing directory trees. Let's get started coding. The first Bash example we will look at is a simple Hello World program. In Bash, a typical code line consists of the command itself, in this case, an echo which is a program to print a string to the screen, followed by an optional argument. In this case, it's the string hello world. Potentially, you might want to add multiple arguments if the command expects that. And also, you can have comments. Comments start by using a hash. Now we can execute this command and as expected, we hello world on the script. How do you run the script? You have two options. First, you could copy and paste this command directly into your bash terminal and execute it. That is only feasible for small scripts. The second option is that you copy and paste the code into a file, for instance, called hello world.sh. The ending sh is often used for shell scripts, but it is not mandatory. You can use any ending or even no ending at all. Next, you need to make it executable. Use change mode to change the permission of a file. The first argument of change mode is the file attributes that you want to have changed. In this case, I want everyone 
for all users, for A for all, I want to add a new permission and I want to add the execution permission. That's the X stands for execution. So I want to make the hello world.sh file executable for all users. After that, you can run the hello world script by running dot slash hello world.sh. There are two things here that might still be unclear. The first question is, how does the operating system know that this script should be executed by the bash command line interpreter? So by default, bash uses itself as the default interpreter, if not otherwise specified. In our case, the hello world file did not have any interpreter specified. So by default, it will be executed by the bash interpreter. But it's often better to be explicit. And you can be explicit by adding a magic line to the first line of your script, which tells the operating system which interpreter to use. This magic line starts with a hash and an explanation mark, and then the path to the command line interpreter that you want to use. In this case, it's bin bash. If you write a Python script, you would write the path to your Python interpreter. The second thing that I need to answer is, why do we need to add the dot slash in front of hello world.sh when executing it. In order to answer this question, let's look at an example in my terminal. I have the hello world script in the folder scripts hello world. In order to run the script, I have two options. I can either provide the full path to the script. In this case, this would be my home folder, my username, scripts, hello world. The alternative is that I provide the relative path. In this case, it would be dot for my current directory, scripts, and then hello world. If I am now in the scripts folder, then the relative approach would just be dot for the current directory slash hello. This answers why we need the dot. The dot slash simply is a pointer to the current directory. So the question now becomes, why can't we just type in hello world.sh? As you can see, without the dot slash, I get a command not found error. And why does it work if I just type in ls? In bash, you can use the which command to find where a program is located. So for instance, typing in which ls tells me that ls is located in bin slash bin slash ls. So how does bash know where this program is located? The answer is that bash searches through a list of folders for a program. And this folder list is specified in the environment variable path. We can see this environment variable by typing in echo dollar here you can see a list of directories separated by colon in which bash searches for programs. And in particular, slash bin is part of this list. And this is the answer why typing in ls simply works. Coming back to the question why hello world.sh does not work. Well, the answer is that my scripts folder in which hello world.sh is located is not part of the path environment environmental variable. In bash, one uses the export command to set environmental variables. In this case, we want to set the path environmental variable and we set it to the current value of the path variable and we append our scripts folder. After running this command, we can check that the path is set correctly and we indeed see that home Simon scripts is now part of the path. And if I type in hello world.sh, it works both in my home folder but also in the scripts folder without having to add the dot slash. In bash, you can use variables to store values, just like in many other programming languages. You can assign a new value to a variable by using the syntax var equals value. And you can retrieve the value of a variable by using the dollar sign and the name of the variable enclosed in curly brackets. There's also short notation without the curly brackets, but I will show you in a second why this only sometimes works. Let us look at an example. Here's our Hello World program. But now in addition, I also want to print the name of the person, which I've stored in the variable name. So here I create a new variable that stores the name Simon. And then in the echo program, I use that variable using the dollar notation. Now if I execute this program, you can see the expected output. Just a comment here on the curly brackets. Imagine I wanted to print out the hello world name followed by an S. If I add the S, you can already see that bash thinks that I'm looking for a variable called dollar names, which doesn't exist. So you would just get an empty string. So 
to specify that the variable name ends after the e and name, I use the curly bracket notation. That's the reason why we have these curly brackets. It should also be mentioned that bash substitutes the value of a variable for each line before it executes it. This means that we can, for instance, replace the command itself by the value of a variable. So here I could, for instance, replace the echo by a variable called command and then specify a new variable here equals echo. Now bash will replace this variable here by echo and the name by Simon and we will see the same result. Quite often in bash scripts you want to execute a command and store the output value of that command in a variable. The syntax of doing so is the following. Use the, the dollar sign plus normal brackets instead of curly brackets and within the normal brackets you write the command that you want to have executed and the output of that command will be stored in the variable. Let's look at an example. The task of the script is to display the day of the week. The Unix command date prints the day of the week. You can specify how it should be printed. I use here the percentage A to specify that I'm only interested in the day of the week. This command here will print out Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, depending on what date it is today. I use our dollar bracket notation to retrieve the value and store it in the weekday variable and then print it out using our echo command as before. The output is x expected. A big warning here for all fresh bash programmers, the syntax of bash is often surprisingly strict. Consider for instance this example. What do you think will happen if I execute it? I will get an error message saying my var command not found. I wanted to do a variable assignment, but I forgot to remove the spaces around the equal. And as a result, bash thought I'm trying to run the command my var with two arguments. The first one, the equal sign, and the second argument, the five. Of course, my var is not a valid command, so I get an error message. So it is important to remove the spaces here to let bash know that this is a variable assignment. So remember, do not use spaces around the equal sign in variable assignments. Also, what is important to know is that you, if you use a variable that has never been defined before, it will evaluate an empty string. Look at this example down here. I'm printing out value of a new variable that I've never used before. You can see the output. There's no error messages, but instead I just get an empty string in the, in the result. Variables in Bash are by default untyped and treated as character arrays. This becomes clear in this example. I define a variable x that contains the value 5. I'm trying to add a 5 to that variable. Think about what the expected result here is. The end result is actually 5 plus 5. Bash treats these all as character arrays and appends the, the plus character as well as the 5 character as strings to the original value of x. So in bash you can explicitly declare the variable type if you want to. You use the declare command for that, followed by the type of the variable that you want to declare, followed by the variable name. In this case we declare a variable called b that is of integer type. Now let's see what happens in the following example. We create a string variable called a, then we use the same strategy as before, but this time we store the result in an integer variable, in our integer variable b. Now bash does an internal type conversion to integers and computes the result of 5 plus 5. If you try to assign a non-integer value to b, you will get 0 as an output. There's other variable types that bash has. There's, for instance, read-only variables. This is very useful if you know that you don't want to touch a variable value again during your script. As an error prevention, you use the minus r type here. So you can set this variable once, but then if you try to do it again, bash throws an error. There's also arrays uh, in bash. This is very useful later on when we want to loop over, over different values. You use the minus a argument to define an array and you specify the array values by normal brackets with the values separate by spaces. And the syntax for accessing the array elements is the normal bracket notation with the index number for accessing a single element. If you use the add symbol, then you get all array values and if you want to know the size of the array and use the following syntax here to get the size of the array. 